hello everyone. My name is Joe Ellis, and on stage with me is Dan Morozov. We're going to start off with a little video. Hi, we're VidRover, and we build tools that enable media companies to leverage the massive amounts of video content that are currently going underutilized. Our team met at Columbia University three years ago as members of the Digital Video and Multimedia Lab, working on a project called NewsRover. NewsRover originally attempted to address the question of how we could revive broadcast television news for a younger audience to raise its viewership. Needless to say, this was a tough task. We have presented NewsRover and the technologies that we have developed all over the world, from Barcelona to just down the street at NYU. We have won multiple industry and technical demo awards, and our technology has garnered media attention. We decided to patent our technology with the help of Columbia Tech Ventures, and shortly after, we were approached to license the technologies to enable building a consumer-facing news application similar to NewsRover. This experience inspired us to find out if what we poured our time and effort into could be used outside of academia, and we found ourselves in the combines. It's really amazing to see the enthusiastic support we have seen from hundreds of leaders and managers from media companies. Now I'm extremely happy to see that we are able to respond to the challenges and apply the new rover technology developed at Columbia University to contribute to the solutions and the emerging tech industry in the New York City. If I would have known joining the Combine was going to be this much work, I wouldn't have joined. Just kidding, we've learned a ton. As academic researchers, you're kind of developing in the dark and solving problems that you find interesting in an academic setting. After doing more than 110 customer interviews, uh, we have a really good idea of what people want and how what we've built can help them solve their problems. We started the Combine as academic researchers and ended as enthusiastic entrepreneurs. NewsRover has become VidRover. All right, let's get into it. So most of you know what is on screen right here, and this is a video store. So the video store we used to go to back in 1995 was great for one reason, and that was the video store clerk. And the video store clerk had two distinct advantages. They were oftentimes movie buffs, so they had seen everything that appeared in the video store. And also, they could recommend the content that you wanted to see really well based on you know, uh, your mood that day or di different types of movies that you like. Fast forward to today, and we are completely away from the video store model. Over 400 hours of video are uploaded to YouTube per minute. And that's not just user-generated video. Some media companies are getting as much as 2 billion views of videos that they put online. So there's tons of video out there. And not only is there tons of video, there's tons of viewers. So over 200 million Americans view digital video online frequently, and 80% of people who use the internet use it to watch video. And when there's quantity and there's viewers, you know there's going to be revenue. $6 billion was spent last year on online video ads. And what's even more staggering is that 40% of, on, of online video that is watched are advertising videos. So companies are leveraging the video that they do have. This all sounds great. Tons of video, tons of viewers, lots of money. What's the problem? The problem is that companies right now are sitting on a gold mine of video content. They need to get more of their video online. But video content is really hard to search and leverage. It's difficult to gain access to. It's not like standard text. So the reasons here um, that it's so hard is manual meta tagging is very expensive and time consuming. Uh, this is a very difficult task. And internal, the other reason is that internal video content management systems and recommendation software tend to underwhelm um, in, in being able to find specific portions of the video that are vital and important that people want to see. But we're not just telling you this. We've done over 110 customer interviews uh, throughout this process. And we've talked to the actual people who have the videos um, that we'll be working with. So these are the people who have internal content management systems and need the metadata generation themselves. So let's talk kind of a little bit about the current solutions that people are implementing. So currently, how do people generate metadata for their videos? The classic solution. Hire tons of people to watch and tag videos. There are tons of uh, conference rooms and, and services which provide met manual meta tagging of different videos. Uh, a great quote that we had from one of the media executives we that we talked to was, I literally have conference rooms filled with people who, want who tag our videos all day. I want my conference rooms back. Uh, and then the second one is search and recommendation. So it's very difficult to search and leverage videos, as I've discussed. And so finding the vital small maybe clips or important pieces of information within videos is a very difficult task. Most, 
the, most of the customers that we've spoken to believe that their current CMS systems cannot address this need. And kind of a standard quote we've received from a variety of customers is we've tried, to, we've tried a lot of services, but we haven't been able to find a CMS that allows us to quickly find and use our video clips. Editors and producers are taking a lot of their time to search through archives inefficiently. So we have three particular addressable needs given this content. The first one is automatic video metadata generation. So actually being able to tell you what's in the videos. The second one is to design an editor suite for the people who are actually handling those videos. Editors, producers, uh, online article writers. And finally, going out into social media and linking social media back to that content. So now I'll give it over to Dan to talk a little bit about, about our solution. Thank you, Joe. Um, before jumping into the prototype that we've built over the last few weeks, I want to touch on the technologies that we've developed and patented at Columbia over the last three years. So we built a system called News Rover. It records, monitors, and processes 100, video, 100 hours of video every day in real time. And it uh, runs computer vision machine learning pipelines on it to detect visual speakers, uh, detect uh, seg uh, scene changes in the video, and then also doing linking to events and other uh, articles online. And basically, in the course of the last two and a half months, we've been talking to content creators who have had the same trouble of linking videos to the articles and the uh, content, the text content that they're writing. And so we decided to tackle that challenge as our prototype build. And let's jump into it and see what we've built. So imagine you're writing a story about our favorite presidential candidate, Donald Trump. And it's a story about the Supreme Court nomination. And you have this body of text. Now, you want to embed some video. So how about you highlight it? Click on recommendation, and we've already processed all your video archive, cut up all the segments of long stories into small clips, gotten rid of commercials, and allow you to basically select relevant videos to that content. You basically scroll through, click on the one that you're interested in, and we pop up a video that's relevant to the topic that you're writing about. It's from CNN. It's current. It's about Antonin Scalia. And basically, you can peruse that video. You can also go and see directly the, uh, the clips where Donald Trump is speaking in that video about uh, the topic that you're writing about. Likewise, other visual speakers that we've detected, like Ted Cruz or anyone else that's in this video. So, so we've also partnered with a deep learning startup in San Francisco called Axon Image that allows us to extract visual concepts from videos like court politics, justice, to enable better searching and tagging of these video clips. And that's what you've just seen there. Finally, as Joe mentioned, we've also linked to user-generated and social media content, basically finding tweets, uh, digital uh, video, or I'm sorry, image content, and hashtags that are not necessarily linked by text. And now you can embed all of these and find interesting and relevant user-generated content. So, that is basically the prototype we've built over the last few weeks, leveraging those technologies that we were developing over three years. So what's our market? Over the last two and a half months, we, Joe and I have been trying to figure that out. And basically, I'm going to go through three markets that we're going to target in chronological order as we're planning on entering them. The first, as Joe said, is the metadata generation and tagging market. There's a huge need for this. Uh, we spoke to a company that's paying $120 per video hour to tag their videos. And if you consider the size of their collections, this comes out to staggering numbers. Granted that this might be a very large a contract, we've estimated 50 companies or 50 contracts worldwide to about a $200 million per year market. Our next market, as you've assumed, is the video CMS market, where we're not planning on uh, in changing the whole CMS space. We're planning on incorporating and integrating directly with current CMS solutions that companies are already paying for, either for um, developing in-house or hiring external services to provide them those uh, capabilities. And we're planning to augment these CMSs with both video recommendations, UGC linking, and other technologies that we've developed. This comes out to a pretty large market. Finally, we've been approached by online advertisers that believe that by linking advertisement to the video content as well as to user information, they can really target users in a much more intelligent and better way. And I'm going to leave it at that. This market has huge exponential growth potentials if you look at these numbers. And this is probably our long-term play. So who are our competitors and partners in this space? 
So I'm going to address first the video CMS uh, competitors that uh, are working kind of in video, and they're basically adding on ancillary services or working in very niche domains to add uh, video capabilities. And we believe that using our computer vision machine learning expertise, we can truly revolutionize that space. At the same time, there are large companies that are trying to tackle the general problem of visual image tagging. That's visual image understanding using primarily deep learning. And Joe and I and the team believe that that problem or a one-size-fits-all solution is a ways away. But that does not preclude the fact that we can leverage uh, information, domain-specific information that we did, like in News Rover, to build systems that are both valuable and commercializable. So these are our partners uh, that I mentioned earlier. They do uh, deep learning information tagging. They're called Axon Image. Fantastic. And finally, who's the team? Joe and I are PhD students at Columbia University. We both have technical expertise and have experience working in industry, both in government and in the private sector and technology. We're joined by our research advisor and technical advisor, Dr. Shifu Chang, who's one of the leading multimedia researchers in the world. So thank you. That's VidRover. I want to say a special thanks to a couple of people, Brendan Ju and Hongzhi Li, who are our colleagues at Columbia, Shakti MB, who's our fantastic designer, to the Media Lab, to the Combine program, Justin and Satish, thank you very much for making this all possible. And to all the mentors, thanks again. Thanks.